You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we'd all love to hammer those irons, really compress those, hit those nice shots out of the fairway and hit the ball first every single time. It makes the game a lot more fun and a lot easier when we're putting on the green rather than constantly having to get up and down. And I got some really good tricks to help you to really feel that compression of the golf ball, to really get that shaft leaning forward. I wanna walk you through a, a couple tricks that I've learned over the years that make it much more simple to get the shaft leaning forward and really compressing that golf ball, to get your body in the correct positions. And I'm gonna just step by step walk you through on exactly what to do. And then we're gonna do an awesome drill that helps you to make that ball first contact with the divot in front of the golf ball so you can really compress it. All right, so let's jump right into this. What I don't want you to do is just to watch this video think the idea sounds pretty cool, and then go to the course and try it out right on the golf course. Jump up right now, grab a golf club, anything you have laying around your house, you have, if you're at work right now, wherever you're at, grab a golf club, follow right along with me. Now, if you're out at the driving range or at the course, perfect. This is a perfect place to do it. You can do the first half of this video though, right from the comfort of your living room. So let's talk about where the compression of this golf ball comes from and how to really feel like it's that shot where it's just kind of smashed where the ball just sinks into the club face, feels like it's trapped against the club face for four or five or six inches as your club face releases, and it just shoots off there, you know, 15, 20 yards longer than what seems like normal. How do you get that feeling? Now, that comes from a couple of places. Number one, it comes from making sure that you have good swing speed. I really wanna make sure that I finish my backswing and I always come to a good full finish on my follow through. That way I can really keep the acceleration coming through that ball. The second piece comes from, let's go ahead and compress that golf ball by de-lofting the club. Now on the PGA Tour, the pros, the best players in the world have realized it's the easiest way to hit a golf ball. They're taking about 30% of the natural loft of the club off the face at contact. What that means is, if I have, let's say a six iron has 31 degrees. This is a five iron. This has probably got around 27, 28 degrees, somewhere around there, 26, depending on the model. They're all a little bit different. If I have, let's keep the math easy though. Let's say this club has 30 degrees of loft on it. When I come into contact, I'm taking 10 degrees of loft off that club face. And the way you're gonna do this is have the hands leading in front and then also feeling like the toe of the club is kind of closing down. If I'm playing a big you know, cut, if I'm kind of opening the face up, flipping it, and that ball's kind of floating off to the right, there's no way to really compress it like the pros are doing. So I have to have the hands leading forward and I have to hit a pretty straight square shot. I can't be having that ball fade significantly to the right. We're gonna go over that, exactly what to do in this video for that. But the easy cheat for this is take your iron, put the toe of the club right against the golf ball like this at a dress, and then take your normal grip. Now what you'll notice is, because the shaft is now set up way behind the golf ball, as you just take your normal grip and set up to this golf ball, look how it's got your hands leaning slightly in front here at a dress. Now as you come forward into the swing, what I want you to feel like you're doing is let your hips open up and let your shoulders open up a little bit and let your left arm stay nice and tight to your chest. You may even notice the right heel, your right foot starts to come off the ground a little bit. Now, if my body's in this position, almost like I was gonna open up and toss a golf ball toward the target, I wouldn't toss a golf ball this way. I would open up and toss it toward the target that way. That's in a great body position to let my hands lead the way and to take that loft off the club, just like the pros are doing. Now, not only are they doing that for long irons, they're doing that for shorter irons too. I have a five iron here today. We have you know almost a 200 yard shot. You can do that with a pitching wedge. You can do that with a sand wedge. On full swing sand wedge shots where the, the loft is about you know, 56 degrees on a sand wedge, they're taking a lot of loft off that thing. They're taking it down and having you know high 30s, low 40s degrees of loft at contact. So all the way through the bag, taking about 30% of the natural loft of the, of the club off at contact. Now, the second reason that that's gonna help is that when my hands lead the way, I'm much more consistent. If I feel like my hands are in front of the golf ball, the club head is gonna trail back behind and it's gonna be very easy to contact that ground in a much more consistent manner, which we're gonna to get to later on in this video. But that's in a nutshell why we need to be doing this. Let's go ahead and jump into it now. I want you to take five practice swings and we're gonna do these without the golf ball. 
five practice swings and I want to focus on the hips being open. So again, I'm putting the toe of my club forward to what would feel like, uh, you know, I'm going to hit it with the toe. Or I can imagine this is a, where the term of the title came from, this is a hammer. And I'm going to hammer a nail straight into the back of my golf ball like this. So I'm going to make five practice swings feeling like my hips get open at contact and my body leads the way. So go ahead and do five and really feel like you brush the, the carpet or the turf, the ground, whenever you're doing this on your practice swings. So I'm really letting my body lead the way. Again, my left arm is nice and tight against my chest, really connected there. And my hands are in front of the golf ball as I come into contact. So if you look at this slow motion drill here, the slow motion video, you can really see those hands leading the way as you're coming into contact. And you're just gonna feel like, what I love about this drill is if you imagine the tip of this club being the, the hammer, it's very powerful feeling driving that nail down and through the golf ball. So do about five reps, 10 reps, however many it takes you to get comfortable with that, focusing on the hips. Now, as we go a little bit more advanced with this, let's work on the tip of the club or the toe of the club and think about what that should be feeling like. Again, if this is a hammer, if I lean this club forward, so let's imagine we're looking at it from this way. If I lean that club forward, you see how the, the toe of the club is kind of down into the ground. So if this is a hammer and I was driving that nail, I would want that nail to kind of be angled this way, kind of down through the golf ball. A lot of times what I'll see players do when they flip an ad loft, which makes it really difficult to compress the golf ball, they're kind of flipping here and they're kind of coming level through the ground or almost hitting up into the golf ball. I want to visualize in my mind's eye that nail is going down into the golf ball, driving through the turf deep down into the ground. That way, as I'm coming through here, I really feel like I'm compressing or smushing the ball down into the ground. Even though that's not what's happening, the loft of my club is getting the ball up in the air. I want to feel like I'm trapping this golf ball between the club face and the turf and I'm really pinching it, almost like the ball's made out of rubber, and I'm just kind of smushing it down into the ground to really compress it. Again, not what's really happening, but that's a sensation or the feeling that you're gonna have. So five more reps, getting that same type of feeling, really compressing the golf ball. Hands are leaning forward. Turn that toe in, drive that hammer down into, or that nail down into the ground. Now, last piece here, and where I see a lot of players get this idea, and they say, yeah, I thought, I thought about getting that forward shaft lean before. I thought about really trying to compress the golf ball, but the problem is when I do that, the ball shoots way off to the right. So whenever I make this swing and I feel like my hands get forward, now all of a sudden the face is way open like that. You see how my club face is way up there. Well, the reason is as I get my hands forward, that's automatically gonna open up this face. And most likely if you're flipping the club, that's to square up the face. If I get my hands forward, now what I have to do is roll my hands to square that face back up. So it's just like this. If I put my hands forward, face turns wide open. Now without changing anything, I'm gonna leave the shaft exactly where it is, my hands exactly where they are. I'm gonna rotate my hands this way to square up that club face there. Same thing if I have the tip of the hammer here. If I go ahead and just lean my hands forward, now all of a sudden that hammer's going way out there somewhere. I have to roll my hands so the tip of that club is facing squarely to the target and I'm driving that nail toward the target down into the ground. So that's the last key there. I want you to do five reps where you do this for me. Toe of the club toward what would be the golf ball. I come kind of halfway down in my swing and then I'm gonna rotate that toe down to the ground, roll my wrist to square it up, and then I'm gonna come back to impact and see if that's square. Then I'm gonna come back to address and I'm gonna swing one. Again, hammering that nail. That's gonna help me to drive that ball inside out, hit a nice draw when I really compress this, rather than just kind of opening it up and having it fade out to the right. So let's go ahead and hit one now. And if you're out on the range, you would hit a few shots with this. You're doing five practice swings, five practice swings, five practice swings to get the feeling on all three of the areas we talked about. And then we're gonna hit five shots. So let's go ahead and try that out, see if we can hit a nice compressed little draw here. There we go, and that was perfectly hit. That's dead straight, just a few feet right of the flag. And I actually flew over the green there, hit a little bit too solid. I have to club down a little bit, but that's a good problem to have. If I can hit it too solid and carry the green from 190, hey, that's a good problem to have. All right, so I took a look at my flight scope. I saw that I carry that one 205, a little bit uh, more solid than I was expecting. I'm about 195 yards from the, from the flag. So I'm gonna club down to a six here. And again, you know, you start compressing those balls 
those golf shots, you'll easily pick up a club more distance. Now, in the first half of these drills, what we just covered there, getting the body open, getting the hands leading the way, squaring up the face, all those were an effort to really compress the golf ball and to get the characteristics of how my club is coming through contact to be correct. Now from here, I wanna control where is my low point. The real key now to make sure that I'm hitting it crisp every single time is I have to come down, I have to contact this golf ball first, and then I gotta hit the ground second. Now, if you're not used to hitting the ground or you're used to flipping a little bit, this can be a little bit scary because if you start to try to hit the ground, sometimes you may hit a few chunks and automatically say, I don't wanna do that anymore. Let me go back to flipping what I know how to do and start hitting it fairly consistent. Well, this is a great drill. It's gonna help you to eliminate those chunks, still compress the golf ball like we talked about, and it just makes it a lot easier to do. So the first drill here is gonna be a tee drill. Now this one you wanna do outside, and you wanna do it on some fairly short grass. Now I'm gonna set this tee up somewhere between a quarter inch and a half inch off the ground. So I'm just gonna tee it up like I would a golf ball, take the golf ball off, and now you can see this, this, this uh, tee is barely sticking out of the turf. Now my goal here, is to still come down and clip this tee. And I wanna brush a little bit of turf after this tee, but I don't wanna hit it down into the ground so hard that I see some dirt fly up. I'm just looking at brushing the turf. So now I've given myself this small margin for error to make sure that I'm hitting it in the right, the right spot. Now what you'll be surprised on, most players don't have a consistency problem. I've said this time and time again when I have players come in for, in, for, for in-person lessons. They don't have any, a, a consistency problem, they have uh, the wrong idea or the wrong habit when they're doing this. So I'll see a player come in that's not playing very well, they'll hit ball after ball after ball, thin, 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 thin. They'll hit it thin every single shot for weeks at a time, and it's not a consistency problem, it's just too thin. They're not getting down to the turf enough. So I want you to go ahead and try to work on this, which is gonna be finding that little sweet spot between hitting too heavy and hitting too thin. And this is a great way to do this. So let's go ahead and do 10 reps, where again, I want you to feel like that same idea, that hammering that tee down into the ground, we're just not gonna hammer it quite as hard this time so that we're just brushing the turf. Same idea, just not quite to the extreme. So 10 reps, there we go. And that time was perfect. I clipped that tee, I saw a little bit of grass pop up, but I didn't really have a lot of dirt or a big divot. Let me go ahead and repeat that again. And again, I got that tee really sitting just about a quarter inch off the ground. I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Hands leading. There we go, and I clipped that one right off the turf. The tee just took off, but I didn't take a big divot there. Now the next piece I like to use, the next tool, is this Dr. Scholl's Odorex foot spray powder. This is the one that comes in the yellow can. Make sure it says Odorex on there. The reason I use this one is because it has a real white film, and when you spray it on the ground, you can see it really, really easily. So let me go ahead and draw a line on the ground, on the turf here. I'm gonna try to get it lined up fairly well with the target. Maybe a little bit off there, but close enough. And I think you'll be able to see that really easily on the ground. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing that I did there, but now we're gonna hit a little bit more of a divot. We've gotten control of the height of our divot. So now we need to just make sure that every time we come down, we hit this golf ball, the divot is in front. So we're gonna go ahead and hit a little bit more of a divot now that we're used to being consistent with the turf and kind of coming in level with the ground. Let's go ahead and go back to that feeling again of hammering the golf ball. And now we're gonna do it just like the pros do. We're gonna take a little bit more turf, we're gonna swing a little bit harder, and we're gonna try to make sure every single divot is in front of this white line. So let's go ahead and try it out. Now again, same keys I did with my full swings from the beginning. Hips opening and leading the way. Hands in front and I'm squaring up that club face to make sure that I hit that nice draw. Not sure if I can get my six iron there, but we'll, we'll give it a whirl. All right, so hit it a little bit high on the face. Oh, just barely short, so not quite as good as my last one, but I did pretty well there where I took that divot in front. Let's try one more, exact same thing again. I'd like for you to repeat this five or 10 times. So again, getting that compression on the golf ball, making sure my divot is in front, and I should be able to go all the way down this line and one after another, never see any dirt or any divot behind that white line. 
a little bit more solid on that one. Not sure if I'm gonna have quite enough stick to get all the way back there. Might have to stick with that five. Yep, that's on the front center of the green there. And again, came down and hit that golf ball, divot was in front. Let's try one now where I take away the tee altogether. And this is gonna be the hardest or most advanced way of doing this drill. So the easiest way to get started, clip the tee, get a little bit more advanced, draw the line, have the divot in front. Most advanced would be no tee, ball right on the turf. We're still gonna try to have that divot in front of this line every single time. There we go, and hit that one pretty good. See if I can get it all the way back there. All right, that one almost got to the flag that time, and we'll see, again, my divot is in front of the turf. Now, one thing you may notice is I'm not worried about when I'm hitting these divots. If this divot is barely in front of this white line, or if I'm coming in and it's three or four inches in front of this right white line, if I'm coming in fairly shallow, that's completely fine. Your divot doesn't have to start right where this line is gonna be really tough to get that consistent. You can, if you want to, make it start at the same spot every time, that's fine. But I just want it to be on this side. That's all I'm really worried about. Some of my most flush golf shots, because I'm coming in fairly shallow here with the turf, I may not really start to get down to the dirt until a couple inches in front of this line. Those are my best shots. So I don't wanna necessarily be focused just on getting that right here on the line. I don't think that's gonna give you the best results. Follow those drills. You're gonna be compressing your irons and hit them just like a hammer. Those Dagon Tour Pros, they hit it so good. How do they do that? And one of the things that they do really well is when they're hitting shots, and this is all shots, so all the way from a wedge all the way up to a driver, we'll kind of go over both in this video, but they're able to open their body, stay down in what, what most people call covering the golf ball, put pressure on the shaft, and really compress that golf ball with the hands leading in front. Well, there's actually a really simple drill that I'm gonna share with you here that allows you to stop doing that. So if you're the opposite of that, if you feel like you lose your posture, if you end up kind of throwing or flipping the club at the ball, your contact and your ball flight isn't as strong as you'd like for it to be, I have an awesome drill for you. Now be sure to watch this drill because even if you've seen something similar to this, I have a couple of key points with this that really make all the difference in the world when you're doing this drill. So make sure you do this the right way and you're gonna have a level of solid contact that you haven't had in a while. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and take our grip and then I'm gonna slide my right hand down to where about half my right hand is on the shaft, half of it's still on the grip. And then I can kind of have my hands looking like this. So it's just like a normal grip would be. I'm just sliding them apart. Uh, split hand grip, a lot of people will call this, but there's a couple modifications that we're gonna do. Now, one reason this is really good if you're tending to lose your posture, so you're kind of backing up, you're doing the opposite of covering the golf ball, you're losing your posture, your hips are going toward the golf ball, a lot of times you're not opening your body very much. Well, what happens is you have to flip that club to be able to hit this golf ball. Now with a split hand grip like this, you really don't have the length to actually throw the right hand and still reach the golf ball. You know, the club would be much longer if my hand was in the normal position. So if I choke up on it like this, I have to make some modifications. So when I take my split hand grip like this, now as you come through contact, instead of raising up and throwing the club, you have to stay down in your, in your posture, just like the pros are doing, staying in that posture through the shot. So this is a great cheat to give you the feeling of exactly what the pros are feeling as they're hitting the golf ball. Now there's a couple things I want you to focus on when you're doing this. Number one, I want my body to open up. So I really wanna feel like my hips open up. I'm gonna feel like my left arm is kind of cinched across my body like this. So if we're looking from face on, my, my chest, my, my arm is cinched across my chest like that, and it's the opening that gets the, the club to the ball. I'm gonna feel like my belt buckle, again, this is a feeling, is pointing toward the target. It's not gonna be, it's only gonna be about 45 degrees open, but that's the feeling I'm gonna have. And I wanna go ahead and let my right heel start coming off the ground so that I can actually get in this position. If my heel stays down, it gets really tight. You really can't do that. So I wanna really feel like I'm opening up, left arm across, right heel up, that's gonna be really good. Now the second piece here, and what's really important, is like a hockey slap shot. Now good hockey players, what they do is they put pressure into the stick. So again, if I do my split hand grip and I go ahead and come down here to contact, if my right shoulder is driving through the shot, then I'm in a great position just like the pros. And I can feel this by taking my split hand grip, 
putting my club behind the golf ball and then feeling like my right shoulder drives forward until I put some pressure into that shaft. So you actually see the shaft bending just like a hockey stick would be bending and I'm pushing that into the ground. That's that pressure I wanna feel. The same thing's happening in a golf swing. I'm putting some pressure into this ball with my right shoulder as it keeps on moving forward. That allows me to take that divot in front of the golf ball and really have my hands in front. So as my right shoulder goes forward, that puts the pressure into there and my hands are in front. Now, if I'm doing this incorrectly, if I'm kind of standing up and throwing at it, my right shoulder stays back and I flip the club like this. There's actually no way for me to reach the golf ball way back here like this. My right shoulder's back and my, I'm out of my posture if I don't flip to be able to reach it. Now, if you do this drill, all of a sudden, I'm way away from the golf ball now. So this is gonna train you how to not only stay in your posture, but to get that pressure in the shaft so you can feel like you really compress it. Here's what I want you to do to get that feeling. We're gonna go ahead and go down to the shot, feel that pressure in the ground, bend, actually bend that shaft into the turf a little bit. And then from there, drive your right shoulder on through it. So I'm putting some pressure into the ground, right shoulder keeps going forward, and then I'm throwing that golf ball down the fairway. If you're coming out of your posture, you're feeling it way back here. We wanna get that thing moving forward. Now, here's another piece with this that ties in with exactly what we talked about. A really big key with this is my right elbow. If I'm losing my posture and I'm throwing the club, my right elbow is straightening very early. It's almost like if I grabbed a golf ball, I would be thinking of it if I'm losing my posture as me standing up and throwing everything at the golf ball. Well, in reality, the golf swing, if you look at the pros, is much more of an opening motion and they're feeling like they're tossing that golf ball down the fairway like that. So same feeling here. Get the split hand grip, put some pressure into it and look at my right elbow. See how it's still bent. I'm not letting that extend until after contact. So let's do the same thing again. Put pressure into the ground two or three times, right shoulders going forward. Notice my right arm is staying bent. And then I can make a couple swings, feeling my right arm bent. And then I'm gonna release that and my right arm's gonna straighten out as I come into the release. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna get a couple pressure into the shaft, come back, right arm bent, right arm bent. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let it go through the ball instead of at the golf ball. And that really helps me to save up that lag, save up that hit until late. And then I'm letting that fly down the fairway. So you see here, as I hit this iron, you're gonna hear from the sound of it that I really put a lot of pressure in this ball. It really gets a nice, solid contact sound. Let's give it a whirl. There we go, hit that one fantastic. Nice penetrating ball flight, straight as an arrow. When you follow those drills, that's really gonna help you to get into a position um, that you're probably not used to if you're coming out of your posture. I got a simple trick that you can do with a piece of a notebook, a folder, an iPad like I have here, really anything. And I'm gonna show you the right position and the wrong position for the right hand and it's really gonna change how you deliver this club through impact, how you feel like you're really compressing the golf ball rather than flipping. So if you have trouble feeling like you come out of your posture, your kind of hips move toward the ball, you throw the hands and arms of the golf ball, maybe you don't have that forward shaft lean that you want, maybe you don't really feel like you're hitting down and compressing the golf ball, hitting the ball, and then taking that nice divot in front of it. If any of those things sound like you, this is really gonna be a game changer from you, and it all ties back into how you properly move the right wrist in the golf swing. I can't wait to share it with you. I have a couple secrets to this, specific ways that you do this that are gonna make all the difference in the world. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's talk about what's happening in a bad golf swing, essentially. So if I'm throwing this club, I'm losing my, my lag here. I've done this before, everybody's done it. Every single player that's ever picked up a club did this at some point and hit bad golf shots. We had to learn how to get this club lagging and to get the hands in front at contact. So when that cast is gone or that, that lag is gone and we're casting a little bit, if we look at the right hand, there's two things that are going on. My thumb, if I'm looking at this, my hand goes down, that's called ulnar deviation. If my wrist goes up, that's called radial deviation. So the hand is going into what would be wrist down, ulnar deviation, kind of like I'm casting a fishing, fishing rod. The rod's already cast here. That's the first move. And this is, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's exactly what's happening to, to a smaller degree. And then also my wrist goes flat. So if I'm pushing this club forward with my right hand, which so many golfers do, and I used to do myself, 
then my wrist goes flat there. It feels really powerful. That's why everybody does this motion. Because if I'm trying to hit the golf ball that way and I'm right-handed, it feels like I need to hit that thing by casting this club and pushing it forward with my right wrist like that. And even though it feels powerful, it actually slows down your club head speed because when I cast it, it's moving too fast back here and actually decelerating as I'm coming into the shot. Here's the difference. Here's what I want to have happen. In a good swing, I want to have this right wrist angled back. That's what's called wrist extension. So I want to have it ba bangled back as much as I can at that point in the swing, kind of this last parallel in the downswing. And I also want to have my wrist into what's called radial deviation. So I want to feel like my, instead of my wrist being down, I still have it up like that. So it's those two moves together that make this happen. When I'm there, now I want to go ahead and release this out in front. So let's imagine this like I have my iPad on my hand. So if I swing halfway down and I cast this, the face of my iPad, if I was reading my iPad, I would be able to see the face of my iPad. If I do it the right way, my wrist is angled back into wrist extension and up into radial deviation, you'll see that my iPad, the face of it or how I would be reading on here, would now be pointing down to the target line. So you want to feel like your right hand is, is coming down the target line. The palm of your hand is going to the target line all the way through contact, and then you let it release. So that's the big key there. That right wrist needs to be facing the target line all the way down, and then it has to throw. The last piece is actually really simple. I have a great tip for that too, but that's gonna feel like I'm smacking that club, like, like throwing that club through contact, like I'm uh, smacking my hand here. I'm gonna go ahead and let that release as I'm coming on through. So if I was tossing a golf ball, let's imagine I was just gonna toss to somebody 15, 20 feet in front of me. That's exactly what you would do anyways. You would have that wrist kind of angled back as your body opened, you would then go ahead and release it. That's exactly the same thing we're trying to do in the golf swing. Have that iPad facing back toward the target line, and then from there, go ahead and flip and let it go. Most players that make this mistake either hit early and flip it, or if they do try to have that wrist angle back, they forget about letting it go and they lose all their speed. They just try to hold on. I don't want you to hold on. I want you to go ahead and let that wrist fly down the fairway. So if you're doing this right, the right wrist to you should feel like my palm is angled back toward the target line, and as I open my body, I'm just tossing the club down the fairway. And you'll see how, now when I, when I mention that, if you watch me swing, it'll look a lot like that when I make a golf swing. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. So to me, it feels like I'm just turning, wrist angle back, and I'm just letting it fly. It feels very effortless. It feels like I can hit it very long way, a very powerful swing very long way when I do that. And the speed all comes through through contact now rather than prior to contact. Really handy. So as we start our downswing, we talked about how we have that hand out. That gets us in a great position here. And as we come through contact, we want to have the hands forward leaning in front. Now you'll notice what I did there. As I leaned my hands forward, look what happens to the club face. Most players will do this when they first do that. As they get the hands in front, that club face opens up. Now I have a great bonus drill for you called the tennis racket drill where I'm gonna talk about exactly how to move the wrist to get that square so that when I come through contact, I can hit that nice tight draw, leaning the hands in front, compressing the heck out of that golf ball, hitting the ground really consistent, consistently day in and day out. Man, it just makes it a lot more fun to play golf when you're doing that. So to see that video, all you need to do when I play the preview here in a second is just click the card that pops up on the screen. If you don't see a card, don't worry. Just go ahead and click the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video and you'll talk when we'll learn how to pair up what we talked about here today with getting that contact to have that nice, tight, controlled draw. So best of luck and I'll see you in the tennis racket drill. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. 
as I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be rotating.